Hi, welcome to the Louise Ginetta YouTube channel filmed at the Louise Ginetta Gallery and Studio, Buxton, Derbyshire, the UK. Today we're going to be talking about making a landscape out of textures and then painting it in acrylic. Round here we have these beautiful rocky outcrops, Corbridge, Stanage and also the roaches. It's made out of sandstone grit and the outcrops revealed by erosion are then eroded further into these wonderful shapes by the sand that they're made of themselves but whipped about by the wind and the windy weather at the tops often situated very at the, at the very top of the moors so they're really really beautiful very very atmospheric I've done a lot of this sort of work and I really enjoy finding things that uh, really depict the texture of something first I really like the way that you can paint within the grooves and on the surfaces of these images um, so you can get an awful lot of really nice colour combinations going on. I'm going to do this on a canvas board so it's a panoramic canvas board and the reason I'm doing a canvas board is because the tensions created by the stuff all stuck on causes the surfaces of even a good quality paper to ruckle a bit or um, warp a little bit. Although if it's 600 gram watercolour paper and it's been stretched it isn't so bad but this just really simplifies it. Also I'm going to be painting it in acrylics and I won't be framing it behind glass. I've got a canvas board here. I've already stretched three pieces of paper on board because I'm going to create the collage on the paper and then I'm going to stick it to the board. I use a book binding PVA glue which is PVA-C so it's pH neutral and is therefore archival. It also dries slightly flexible which is why they use it in book binding. I dilute it with about 25% water, 50 to 25% water for this method. So I've got a rough idea of what I want to do and I just lay out things. I want a few rocks to come down so that there's a pathway and then the rest is going to be heathers and stuff and rocks, a few rocks and a pathway. So I can just stick these down. I know from the past that this wallpaper makes really nice rocks and things and I don't have to be too precise because the whole painting process changes it again but it gives a background texture so I shall stick these down. I don't have to worry too much about being precise again I'm just going to cover the whole thing with textures and interest and I can think that things go behind and in front so that you can get some sorts of perspective already. See how that is going that is going that way, the grain, so I'm going to change that because I want a different grain. And I simply get the wallpaper and I just tear it along the lines that work for me because this one's got a sort of horizontal line which can be for the strata of it. So then I'm just going to start building up these lovely shapes that there are. What's really nice as well about these is that they are jagged and they're strange shapes so that they in fact come across the horizon and make lovely marks and things. They're just such a natural easy thing to use without really having to worry about it too much. Um, so I want a piece that goes in front but there's a big rock further back so I'm going to pop that in with these lovely shapes and the rock actually sticks its nose into the air again breaks up the horizon really beautifully they're a very very nice subject to do actually so this is just the PVA glue I don't care if it seals these surfaces I should have a pair of gloves on I'm not worried about it sealing the surfaces because the paint's going to be acrylic so it'll soak in and you can leave spaces in between because they're really nice as well and you can overlap bits under the bottom so they don't have to be precise at, precise at all that has got a lovely nose that really juts out, so I'm going to use, make sure it's got it. And as I say, I know from past experience that this stuff makes really nice rock formations. 
so I don't really have to worry about it too much. I like these lines that were underneath it. So I'm putting them back on the top. Um, so that's like that. That's like that. And then this comes over to start the next base. The gaps in between work really well as well. This is going to be taken over with heathers, so I don't need to worry too about that too much. And these rocks are sort of falling away down the cliff. So you can give it some of that um, look as it sort of drifts off. And then there's some lovely chunky stuff here. So I just tear the papers. This is the surface of one and they don't have to meet up. You know, they don't have to overlap or meet or be precise. It really doesn't matter. And I just move on to this one. So I'm going to try and get the path to go through there and then have these bits with this lovely gap in it. So you've got these gorgeous, strange shapes coming, happening. Um, I've already torn out the papers. I'm just going to quickly bung them in. I'm using a few extras here just to add extra textures to it. But it, again, does not need to be precise. This is lovely. It's got this gorgeous, funny little opening between the two. There's lots of this sort of things. The kids go boulder climbing, so they'll jump around on all the boulders, in between the boulders, because of course they're not so high, so they don't do themselves any damage. Although you can damage yourself on them. And then there's just a few little fallen rocks and so on beneath these which start to form the rocks that come down by the path so you then just bring these down now some of these you can stick on at this point some some of them you can add as you keep going so that's my rocks done and i've got to leave it to one side to dry so the next stage is to build up lots of different textures and I'm not too worried about making a composition at this point I'm just finding things that make textures so I've got bandages and I'm sort of thinking what they're going to look like when they're dry what they're going to look like when they're painted how I can use those textures to paint with so I just get almost anything I can I mean they're quite nice and I will probably do some on a piece of paper like this this is just bits of twiggy bits I had. So I will cut them how I want them. Well, I mean, that'll do. Bung some glue on it, lots of glue, so it's very wet. And I mean, I can start thinking about arranging things, but if you, the best thing to do is not to arrange them. So there's lots of glue on there. Don't worry if they disappear off and start don't doing what you want them to do too much, because it's you're going to bung them all together afterwards. And once there's lots of glue on there, you just get a piece of tissue paper and glue that on top of it and then of course when that dries that tissue paper will hold them down and create its own texture as well so you do lots and lots of that sort of thing until you have a whole series of things that you find interesting I mean this is quite nice when you just literally drop on a load of string so again put the glues on I mean, these are really nice, these ones where they've buckled up a bit, where the strings have been pulled and they're knotted. And then you just, I mean, you, those would probably stick down as they are. But I'm just going to overlay it with tracing paper and then see what it does when it dries, because I think that it will 
as it dries it'll sink into all the holes because it'll contract won't it it'll shrink back down again and slowly you start building up these lovely textures and you can be as patient as you like with this i'm not that patient i mean there is really nice ways of making little seed heads you can knot together bits of string to make little seed heads And then just stick them down like so, and it all just adds interest. And of course you don't need to worry about it being looking good at this point. Right, this is just natural nettle fibres. You just cut them to a length and then allow them to separate with the paintbrush. So, and just build them up, build up parts now that you can apply as a collage to the collage, but then also build stuff on top of that once it's applied to the canvas board. You can add more, can't you? you know, so you can overlap it and overlay it over and over again. So that's the nettle fibre that seems to be sticking down really well without having to really worry about it. Sorry about my thumb, I cut it when I was cutting mounting board. Another good one is this lovely hessian. So you can start pulling out all the filaments. And then you've got, not only do you have the filaments that you've pulled, which make really nice grasses. So you just glue on them but I'll show you. So you do this for a bit, taking out the filaments and then all these extra bits can just go on as well. But then you actually have a length like that so you can cut it off at the base. Oops, I shouldn't have done that. But also, you've got, you know, you've got these lovely groups of them. It doesn't matter if they go solid like that, it really doesn't matter. Just bung it all on and see what happens when you paint it. I'll show you as well how it all turns out. And obviously longer bits as well. Okay, I'm going to do a few of these because I've got two or three of these pieces of paper stretched. So I'm going to build a whole load up. I like these ferns that I've got at the bottom. I don't know how well they're going to actually glue down. I mean I'm hoping that once the um, tissue paper has dried over the top of it it'll actually pull them down because otherwise they're a bit too proud, they're not really working. I suppose you could get a load and press them in a book first. These I collect at an optimum point when they're just dry enough that they don't rot when you collect them. I'm just going to put some tissue paper over the top of it and see if it ha see if it works. They're so pretty, aren't they? They make such lovely shapes. Yay for tissue paper. Oh, let's just see what happens. You see what happens around here is the ferns are on the on the lower slopes, part of the slopes, and the heathers are on the tops. And it's going to take ages to dry. But it should be dry for tomorrow and I should have some elements of nice things to touch with paint. So you've got these as well. You can just trim them a bit so they're not all the same size. You can put it on as is. And then trim it. And of course you can bend it round so it's got more life to it. You can add some of the other ones that you've already pulled out on top of that. And these paint really beautifully. You can just keep going and going with them. I'm going to do some more. Just bring it down like so. And do a few little clumps like that which I'll cut out. Ok, 
chicken, but it can be one clump. I'll do another clump here. Begin by just popping that on. And I could change the shapes, you know, the lengths of them a bit, but I'm going to do it with a, by bending it. So you're starting off with that one, and then just, just keep going. And my hands are getting sticky. There we go. And it looks pretty scruffy and pretty uncoordinated and everything, but it will work once it's dry and once you've stuck it on. So we've got a whole load of textures there. Just make sure they're all glued down. So I've cut pieces out of the collage that I made on the board. And then I cut round them to make the shapes a bit more sort of organic so that when they go onto the canvas board, onto the actual piece of work, they're a bit more, as I say, organic. And just because I have this shape, it doesn't mean that I keep it like that. There's potential to still cut and mess and then overlap the shapes if you want to as well. 